Hi and welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us this evening for Platform Awards 2020 Artist in Conversation. We've come together to discuss openly what it feels like to be an early career artist at the moment, particularly under the constraints of COVID-19 and to share experiences of participating in the Platform Graduate Award and key learnings from that. We're hoping that today's conversation can be useful to any upcoming graduates or early career artists who perhaps didn't do the art school thing or have just left and who are thinking about what their next steps are and how they might approach the developing and adapting their works to a more digital context that we're all experimenting with at the moment. For those of you who haven't heard of the Platform Programme, Platform is led by the Contemporary Visual Arts Network Southeast, so CVAN, and is a partnership between Aspects in Portsmouth, Phoenix Arts Base in Brighton, Modern Art Oxford, and Turner Contemporary in Margate. Each year, it supports recent graduates making some crucial early steps for their practice, providing the opportunity to realize a program of their own work in collaboration with an arts organization. I'll be your host tonight and I'm Miran Kessling and I was selected for the platform pro program in 2016 when I graduated from the Ruskin School of Art and before that I was at Oxford Brooks doing my art foundation so lots of uh, time in Oxford. Um, I did the program under rather different circumstances as you can imagine um, in which I was exhibiting my works in the gallery and expanding upon and reimagining my degree show with one of the galleries um, with the brilliant team at Wadnar Oxford. Um, I'd say there's not really a straightforward path to being an arts graduate or an early career artist and I think for me the platform award was really beneficial um, at that time. Um, it was a really solid project that I could start work on immediately after graduating um, with the support of the team at Wadnar Oxford and it had a fee and um, it really taught me how to kind of learn how to work more collaboratively collaboratively with teams um, and gave me the chance to run my own event, um, which was an experimental life drawing class. Four years on, um, and might I say four very windy years on, um, I continue to work in the visual arts as an artist and alongside my practice I also work at a gallery called Joad Arts where I run the events programme. And I would credit the platform event I ran um, and the experience I had working with Modern Oxford as being really instrumental in my path towards becoming an events programmer, as well as um, developing my own artistic practice. Um, most recently, I exhibited in the online exhibition Flow at Modern Art Oxford, um, which was um, work made sort of during lockdown by artists in Oxfordshire. And that was a great experience for me in terms of learning how to present my drawing works in an online context and creating content around the work that people could experience at home. Similarly to this year's platform artists um, who've been developing and presenting work, they've also been doing an online exhibition um, for this year's edition of the programme. Um, and without much further ado, I will firstly say congratulations to this year's um, artists, firstly on being selected for the award and also the brilliant and strikingly different shows that they have presented online. And I would encourage you, if you have not already, to please go online and check out their exhibitions on the Modern Art Oxford website. Um, I will introduce each artist in the order in which they have shown in platform. Um, we currently have um, Mahela Elena um, Mann, who's new show has just opened this week, um, but the programme started with Khadija, Khadija Cecile Nyang from the University of Reading. Would you like to say hello Khadija and introduce what you did for Platform in a few words? Hi, um, so I'm Khadija um, and my exhibition is titled It's Not Just Hair and it's basically exploring um, or celebrating my relationship with other black women um, in relation to our hair. Amazing, that's brilliant. And um, what kind of what kind of works can we see in your show? Um, how have you presented them? Um, so it's quite a mix. I think basically the journey of the work was starting off with my personal exploration, and it ended up as the culmination. So um, the first part of it is two videos that I made that are just like very self reflective, um, and then I did portraits of a lot of my friends and family and you can go through the portraits while listening to a sound piece I made, which is me interviewing all of my friends and family. 
It's really awesome. Thank you so much, Khadija. Um, and I will go on to Natalie Sered from the University of Reading. Hiya. Hi, Natalie. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Brilliant. Can you tell us a bit about what you did for Platform and how that work has sort of manifested on one of the Oxford's channels? Yeah, so um, my exhibition surrounds the my sort of feminist poetry film, Beefcake. Um, and so you can see that on the exhibition along with the poem itself, um, some stills, I've got some kinetic sort of audio pieces um, as well. So yeah, lots of a mixture of things. It's really exciting. Thank you. And I'm going to go on to James Scott, who just graduated from the Ruskin School of Art. Hi, James. Hello. Hi. Can you tell us a bit about what you've been making and how it's appearing on Modern Oxford's channels? Cool. So um, for my exhibition, I presented my website, um, ongoing interactive website, I suppose, Vase and Things. Uh, along with a live stream uh, workshop and uh, edition uh, in the form of a mystery box. Vase and Things is a project um, that I suppose acts as navigation through my current artistic practice um, using an anchor of a raisin uh, that bounces between my artistic uh, sort of personas as a trickster, pioneer, experimenter, uh, and the exhibition creates encounters for the viewer um, through various situations and traps, um, which could perhaps be seen as a game. Yeah, I think that's a nice little introduction. I spent, uh, I enjoyed spending some time delving into your website on Saturday. It was, um, yeah, it's brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> and we have uh, Mahela Inela, Elena Mann, who is also a graduate from the Ruskin School of Art. Hey. Hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, so, um, well, uh, my exhibition, Domestic Ideograms, is essentially a concoction of text, uh, moving image work, photographs, drawings, uh, collaboration, which aims to unpack a bit the relationship between um, domestic textile work and the environment in which this specific type of craft is being made. And I think that that is, I guess, the main kind of yeah, I suppose theme of of my show, and then um, as you as you as you go through it, as you wander around through my page, then I hope you'll be able to kind of like ask yourself questions around what it means to reenact a, a specific kind of traditional craft from afar. Um, how can you get to essentially know something that is out of reach, which, for instance, your ancestors have made, and how you can use essentially storytelling as a means to to unpack a, a kind of craft that is uh, both spatially and temporally out of reach. Yeah, I think that that's kind of... Very impressive. Um, thank you for those succinct and su such eloquent um, explanations of your work. Um, and yeah, welcome and thank you so much for joining me this evening online. Um, I just want to say to our audience that we are welcoming questions all evening. Um, please put them in the chat if you would like to ask the artists anything. We'll do um, a specific sort of Q&A at the very end, but if you just want to kind of react to the conversation as it goes, we really welcome that. Um, and I will jump into my next question for all of you. So I'm aware that you all had slightly different experiences of graduating. Um, many of you moved home during your final year to different countries in some cases and graduated digitally. And in light of it being a year in which you did a lot of adapting, how did you feel to be selected for the platform award? And did your approach to making work change much knowing that it would be presented digitally compared to perhaps where you were at at the beginning of your final year? Um, I will go with uh, Khadija first, if you're happy to answer that. Sure. Um, so I think initially, obviously, it was a bit of a shock to the system, but luckily, I think our uni um, did quite a good job of still giving us kind of a feeling of ending things because we had um, a live stream. Um, but in terms of being selected, I think it was really quite a great experience just because I think now at the end of the time, it's kind of, I felt a little bit disillusioned, I guess, about the idea of continuing my practice and um, 
having to adjust that was quite an interesting process because I think initially I was really focused on like my work being in this in a room um, where like I had a sound piece and I think I really wanted it to be like something you walk into and like it's dominating part of your experience so I think for my degree show my first degree show was quite hard to kind of shift that so I just put everything in like the image of a room um but actually doing this exhibition is kind of a nice way of like shifting it to being an ex still an experience that can still be quite intimate um and I think for me it, I think in some ways it was really positive because um none of my family lives in the UK so this was the first time that a lot of them could en engage with the work and a lot of the work is obviously about my identity um which like links a lot to my family so it was nice that they could actually experience the whole thing like from start to finish after like four years they've not really they weren't even able to engage with it from a distance so yeah that's one of the positive aspects of it that's so nice how did your family react to your works online and being able to view them at home I think yeah they loved it I mean I think well my family's not hugely into art so I think the concept of it I think they could they really understood it and it was really nice because I think well, I have quite a big family and I've never really been able to speak to like a lot of my uncles and things. Well, I would have not, I would have never thought that they would be interested in it, I guess. And so it was really nice because I ended up having a lot of conversations with like family members I wouldn't necessarily have told, mm. spoken to about my work before and how they felt about it. Um, yeah, so it's really nice. I'm really glad that you're feeling kind of more hopeful about things having done this and I was really impressed actually at how your work, which you know, your painting works translated online. I think that's quite, it's quite hard to get paintings to work online sometimes. Um, and I've been attended a lot of sort of degree shows virtually and um, it, it really varies how paintings do get presented and you know, how they sort of translate. So um, yeah, well done. I think it was done a really brilliant job. Um, Natalie, could you please tell me about, um, yeah, how did it feel to be selected for platform and did your work sort of change much during the process of the past year? So, yeah, um, obviously with the unis closing and stuff, there was less sort of uh, room for critique, I guess, especially face to face sort of um, conversations about how the work was re received and things. So I guess maybe that might have knocked some people's confidence in like their work and the effectiveness of it and stuff so um being selected was very flattering um and so i was very happy about that uh, but definitely had to alter my practice um I, you know even though i was largely film based again as khadija said i was very interested in um having it being immersive and intimate and sort of i guess um presenting work on digitally probably might end up with less impact um so it was just a case of trying to work out how to um provide more impact and make a work still immersive online which is difficult but yeah i feel like your work has a lot of textures in it that i can mm. see would work really well as a phys in in the context of a physical installation yeah um and i think yeah we're kind of sometimes battling with actually how does does this look on a screen um exactly yeah so that's why uh largely why well one of the reasons why i chose to do very um intimate close-ups and um quite a sort of textured soundscape and audio and stuff so yeah, those things added to the immersiveness of the work, definitely. And so you both attended the University of Reading where you did some live stream to sort of celebrate the end of your degree. How was that? Did What did you present for those? Um, so I think it was, I don't know, it was quite, it was interesting, but I think in some ways it was good and bad because I think, because obviously we wanted to represent everyone's work, I think, but it, as an individual thing, it did feel a bit restricted um, because it was kind of like a highlight reel, I guess, of everyone's work. So I think obviously for some people's work to be worked better than others. But yeah. in terms of like the celebration aspect, it was, I mean, I think that one of the things that was really, really nice was that it was obviously live on Facebook, but just 
because I think a big part of the exhibition, like the degree shows, being around people and talking about each other's work, is that there was quite a lot of dialogue, people mm. responding to like everything that was being shown, and so that kind of aspect of like people from outside the art school coming in to like see their friends' work or even strangers' work was kind of recreated in a way, which was nice. Yeah, really because cool. it was it was like a kind of playlist of everyone's thing, and it in in a way it was a, a bit annoying because it there wasn't enough time to show the full um, extent of things. So like my film was just a little clear from the same cathedral. So in a way that was um, not ideal, but again, it kind of forced people to look at everyone's because otherwise you could just, you know, weave in and out and only look, go to the thing you want to look at. So in a way, I guess it exposed people to more types of work. And I got a lot of feedback saying that they were like shocked at the kind of, um, mediums and sort of themes that are presented which is interesting it's good yeah so, yeah. it must yeah I guess I need yeah seeing everything in one go like that um is it must be really broad and the kind of showing everyone's practice um amazing um yeah it sounds like a kind of best of uh reel that you had then cool um I will move on to um Mahela and James so how did it feel to be selected for platform and how did your work sort of change this year? Um, James, would you like to go first? Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, so I suppose when, yeah, with lockdown, suddenly you lost the, um, the physical space, which, yeah, I won't go into that because we've bored to tears for everyone talking about that. Um, but um, yeah, so obviously the, the internet was our new kind of medium um, and I thought where well, I'd be keen on guiding people around the physical space and sort of sort of engineering their their pathway or their journey through one of my works, which is why I made this move to uh, making a web based project um, using code to create that journey. Um, so that kind of yeah, it was it was something that was in my on my back burner of ideas to do anyway, but now I suppose lockdown put that forward yeah. um, and the isolation I suppose was quite a good place to sit and sit in code nice and happily. That's um, a huge skill to have picked up during this time. Yeah and I suppose like forums and um, YouTube tutorials like that whole sort of language and sort of um, space all sort of fed into the work itself. Um, what was it? Um, and I suppose that was that was so that sort of the construction of it was very much happening when I was applying to platform. Um, so yeah, when I applied, it was all quite um, still up in the air where things were going. Um, and obviously, the a website is always available for anyone to log on to. Um, but having the platform week as sort of a focus as a as a like timestamp gave me the opportunity to put these other sideline um, bits on. So the live stream, the workshop, the, the mystery box to kind of have a concrete, yeah, concrete section of this ongoing website that anyone can come and go anytime. Um, and that's been fun working with that for, for the platform show. That's really interesting. So were there not, would you say there weren't so much journeys through your work? beforehand um the do you mean the live stream etc or the actual well it sounds like you're website. curating a journey for someone to access your digital space and you're thinking about you know the, the welcome for them and you're kind of playing around you're quite you're kind, you kind of tease the audience a bit in your um website and i was wondering if um that that was different to how you'd um, presented work previously, um, maybe in physical spaces. Yeah, I suppose I've in physical spaces, I've dealt with sort of instructions and rules and kind of trying to con yeah, control the controllables, I suppose. That's a bit of a sporty term, but um, yeah, kind of, um, yeah, trying to make people act in a certain way and follow rules, which obviously becomes harder on the internet when you can click in and out of things and you can go off somewhere. Um, and I kind of just had to embrace that and work with that new 
freedom that the viewer had compared to being in a space like off the conventions um so i embraced it and also try my best to control it say that's why it's non-mobile because i thought i can't make it too easy for people that's yeah it's a i don't know um yeah it's something no, no scrolling in bed <laughs> yeah that's great thank you so much um Mahela, how about you um did your work change much this year and how did it feel to be selected for platform um, it felt incredibly good to be selected for the platform or to be honest with you. Um, I was feeling very, very unmotivated um, when um, just shortly before receiving the email. I mean, I was just about to finish my, my degree, like I presume you, you all, and I wasn't quite sure what, what direction to take. Um, also, under the current conditions when um, the, the, the world of visual arts, I suppose, or culture at large is at the standby pretty much. Um, and so it, 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 I, I felt incredibly fortunate to um, have this opportunity to show with Modern Art Oxford. And it also felt like an extension in a way of, of my, my degree, uh, essentially. So um, I think it was for me, it was this opportunity to think about, to rethink my methodology to a certain extent, uh, because well, before the, the lockdown and before this strange digital turn, I uh, was working in a site specific way. I was doing um, installation work that required a physical space. And so um, kind of like realizing that this won't be an option this year. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I kind of sought to implement as much as I could from my method methodology um, to, to the digital space. And what that meant essentially was I knew that I needed, a, I guess, a, a kind of like rigorous um, kind of like architecture, I suppose, an enclosed architecture to then be able to prototype my work. Um, and, and in that sense, I kind of like was able to find it on the, the kind of like the web page of Modern Art Oxford, which just like any chamber has so many different clusters that you can use in so many different ways. And, which is why I kind of feel that um, my work, the narratives that I was kind of working with before didn't change as much, weren't necessarily affected. The, the only thing that was affected, I feel, were the materials that I was kind of using, which, which um, lost texture and lost smell and lost, in a way, gooiness as well. <laughs> Um, so I think that the sensorial, um, kind of like lacking that is a downside, if there is any, any kind of like downside to, to the digital, um, kind of like display. Yeah. Makes sense. I, I really loved in your, in your current exhibition, which is open now, um, how much the kind of documentation process is, is in there. You feel like you're kind of in the process with you, which I really like, um, and is that something that had sort of changed um, this year um, with documentation being, I guess, so important on digital channels if you are working? Um, kind mm, of I don't think it, yeah, I mean, I don't think it changed. Even for my, my physical shows, I was working quite a lot with, with folders and digital archives. And I think that um, if I have a, a long amount of time to figure out my narratives, my installations, then that's everything I need essentially to, um, to make this archive in a way to construct it out of different bits and pieces from that I received from friends, from family, from museums, from all sorts of places. Yeah, essentially. I'm really that impressed. Is important. Yeah, I'm really impressed with how you've all adapted um, so well and yeah, I, I, was, I guess I was thinking about um, when I applied, well, I didn't apply to Platform, my degree show was selected and uh, I didn't have a phone at the time. I think someone had to contact a family member <laughs> while I was away and it was like, it was such a brilliant surprise. I felt really genuinely quite lost and not really sure what I was going to do next. Um, and I guess you guys all applied, so they changed it for your year so that you kind of had to go in with an intention. How did you find sort of writing that down, writing that application? Um, how did your ideas sort of crystallize? Would anyone like to comment on that? Um, well, I guess in a way, I think 
book application, well for me anyways, it was kind of reflected in the way that we had to adapt to submit our work in the first place, I guess. Um, um, so yeah, I think it was interesting, but I think it was, I think because the application was actually a little bit shorter than the artist statement, I think for me it was quite a good way of like just pinpointing, I guess, what I thought was really important and like, I guess in a similar way to the fact that we had like a show reel, it was kind of the application was creating a show reel of your work, I guess, in a way, um, to get the point across in a concise way. Um, yeah. That's a really good tip. Yeah, I feel application writing is um, such a big part of being an early career artist. Um, and we hate to love it. We, <laughs> we love to hate it. Um, I feel like it's very helpful for crystallizing your ideas sometimes. Um, would you guys agree with that in terms of your own experience of platform? I think um, obviously, well, we applied with our um, degree sort of exhibition pieces in mind, but um, we just had to sort of, I guess, um, express our further intentions um, because the final exhibition show that we had was, um, obviously it wasn't planned. You know, it, it wasn't our intention. So in this way, we um, finally had a sort of uh, a final vision in mind, I guess. Um, and so, yeah, definitely it was good practice to sort of plan ahead for digital presentation, um, which is very important, I guess, in the times we're living in now, for sure. Thank you. Um, I might move on to our next question, um, if that's okay with you all. So um, a big takeaway for me when doing platform is that you present work with an arts organ is when you present work with an arts organization, you're working in collaboration with a lot of different experts. And this can differ a little bit to when you're a graduate, um, a kind of graduate or a student, you might be working um, with other students or friends to produce exhibitions, but when you work within an institution, um, there is a lot of people um, who can help you sort of formulate ideas and you learn a lot about um, how these organizations run as a kind of ecosystem. I'd love to hear about your experiences of working collaboratively with Modern Art Oxford and how it, have, how it feels to sort of have your work experienced on their platform. Um, Mahela, would you like to go first? Yeah, sure. Um, I think that what, one of the main collaborative acts as part of my show is the intervention that I did in Joanna Unzueta's uh, display. Um, and I think that what, what struck me uh, about, about this was how easy it was essentially to reach someone that uh, whose practice you admire, whose practice you look up to. Uh, whose practice you would want to, to um, get to know more about, um, and also whose practice you essentially empathize with. Um, I think it, I, I feel incredible, like it's incredible to, to have the chance to collaborate with someone of another generation, essentially of artists, and kind of like develop this cross-generational dialogue. Um, and I, I found it so interesting to kind of like figure out uh, the threshold uh, between my practice and Joanna's practice as well. So I think that collaboration in and of its, itself opened so many uh, new new avenues uh, for, for me to explore. And the, those videos wouldn't have happened weren't I to, to kind of like go around her, her um, visual iteration, her, her virtual iteration. And, and I think that in a way, what was kind of good, I suppose, about this online show is that it, it somehow feels easier in a way to, to reach people um, who you feel are unreachable in some ways. Um, and, and yeah, it felt, it felt incredibly, incredibly good. And it was, yeah, wonderful to have this intimate dialogue with, um, on one hand, the staff of Modern Art Oxford, so Cecilia and Sarah, uh, one of which is the main curator of Modern of, of the Platform Award. Cecilia is um, the one who is usually in charge of our, I suppose, digital shows. So it was kind of, it was very nice to be able to work in parallel, in a way, with, with an artist and with um, a, a, a professional in, in digital technique alike. Um, so yeah, that's, I guess, my answer. 
um, to your question. Good answer. <laughs> Um, thank you so much. Um, James, how did you find um, collaborating with Modern Oxford team and how does it feel to have your work presented online with them? Cool. Um, I suppose, well, I suppose that most, the, well, the biggest collaboration that kind of I worked on with this project was the workshop. Um, so, yeah, I worked with the creative learning team. Um, to put on a workshop for 12 to 14 year olds um, and it was quite exciting because I was using um, using post um, so sending out these boxes which um, we talked about earlier by losing um, losing touch and losing um, yeah the three dimensions when you all on screen so sending out these postal boxes um, and it was really, yeah, working with the creative learning team who knew far more about teaching than I did uh, and how all of the mechanics of an online Zoom workshop would work. Um, and so sort of giving them my ideas, them feeding back to me. Um, also, the gallery hadn't run a workshop for um, youth, uh, yeah, young people um, since the pandemic. Um, so we kind of collabor yeah, collaboratively worked on creating one. Uh, so it's an experiment for me and an experiment for the for the gallery, which is exciting for both of us. Um, and there was hiccups along the way, and things had to change. Um, but that would have been a that wouldn't have been something I would have been able to pull off on my own. Even getting people to get getting a sort of a sample of um, participants. Um, yeah, so dealing with the contacts of the gallery. Um, yeah, so that was really an experience I wouldn't have had unless I was with platform. Um, so was there a second part of your question that I've forgotten? I wish I could have come to your workshop. <laughs> Do you have any hot tips for, for running an online workshop to for 12 to 14 year olds? Um, hot tips. I mean, I suppose uh, everything, like since the pandemic we've been adapting um and things have constantly been changing and i suppose that's why even with this workshop um you think something's going to be going to work and no, it doesn't and um yeah but even on the day of the workshop i had two different groups and the two groups i had work completely differently and my the workshop went in two very different ways with the two different groups um so I had lots of stuff planned um, and only chose the bits that were really suitable for the for the individuals I had. Um, so that was quite exciting for me as well. Um, so yeah, I so lo prepared lo and, lots of planning and thinking on your feet. Yeah, um, yeah, it looks, I suppose if it looks simple uh, for them and it looks, it's had a lot of thought put in by me to present it. Um, yeah, and I suppose that's the essence of raising things, I suppose. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Um, Natalie, um, can you tell me a bit about collaborating with Modern Oxford team and how it feels to have your work presented on their platform? Yeah, so uh, in terms of sort of cultivating a, uh, an exhibition, especially an online one, um, we had to really were I guess it's just different having to um communicate with people by email so you know it's I learned how to um develop or be able to develop a good working relationship with um people via email a good collaborative relationship as well because it's it's um very different to sort of talk to people about your um your intentions and your like artistic vision um by email because it's I guess less responsive, um, so slower as well. So I do think that that's a good, um, you know, a good thing to be able to do because of the times we're living in now, it's probably going to be become more and more um, useful. So that was really interesting, um, especially because I think maybe compared to you, I don't know if I sort of presume you would. In conversation with lots and lots of different people, um, whereas we were just kind of 
talking to a few and so I, especially with Cecilia I found that you know she was she's so invested in um what we were what we were doing and it was just really nice to have that um relationship with her I guess um but yeah presenting online is very interesting I guess it allows for a wider reach as well as I think Mahaley said earlier um which is really obviously very exciting um but yeah I, I think there's pros and cons um I don't think online is inherently inferior I, th I think you can um em embrace what you can and with the times we're in now again you know online is the future so <laughs> It's good. I think it was a good, good experience we had um, this year, definitely. And you know, the, the digital sphere is just so exciting and there's so many opportunities. And so I do feel very lucky to have had this one. I like your excitement. That's, that's good. <laughs> I would echo my a lot of my experience of platform before I was in the exhibition space it was very much email based. That was a huge yeah. learning curve for me. I think it's taken four years of working with email every day pretty much for me to get to a point where I feel confident um, articulating myself and sort of yeah big learning on how to be responsive and communicate so um, yeah I think keep going with that <laughs> it's useful. <laughs> um, Khadija could you tell me a bit about um, your experience of working with the Modern Oxford team and how it felt to be presenting your work on their channels? Yeah, so I think I definitely echo a lot of the same feelings that, um, but especially I think you just, I think it was a really good experience to learn how to be like really clear, I guess, about what you want um, from the exhibition and how you're working with someone. Because I think within the degree show, I think in terms of like what you're expressing, a lot of the time it is just the ideas and um, how the audience kind of responds, but a lot of the kind of physicality of it or the way that it comes together it tends to be a bit more independent I found um so it's quite a nice experience to kind of have someone to like bounce off and yeah as um Natalie said creating that relationship with Cecilia and having someone invested in it was really nice because I think yeah it's as much as you're in a shared space in art school it is still very individual because um yeah, well, I mean, you're individually being marked on what you output, basically. Um, but yeah, I think it was, yeah, it was a really good experience. It's really cool. So like someone that can be critical and supportive and be a sort of sounding board for ideas um, and wants to help you get it finished, I guess, as well. Yeah, yeah. And actually, I think another thing that was really good was also learning about all the like external things that comes with an exhibition, like especially with it being online, I feel like there's a lot of emphasis, emphasis on like how we're going to promote the work and like having to be the one to choose which aspects would be like a good snippet of for the audience to want to see more, which was I think a really good experience. Absolutely. And do you have any tips for marketing your online exhibition from that? I guess it just has to be something quite visual and something, I think just an exciting snippet of that. I don't really know. I guess it depends. Like a teaser. Yeah. 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 Something with a bit of intrigue is good. That's that's really nice. Thank you guys. Really different responses. Um, and I, so nice hearing about the different relationships you had across Modern Art Oxford and how you really utilised kind of the different teams and expertise across them. Um, yeah, it was, it's great to hear actually. Um, I'm going on to my next question. We don't have, we've got about 15 minutes, so I'll do this as my sort of last question, and then we'll see if there's any audience questions. Um, but knowing what you know now about graduating and presenting work across digital spaces through the platform programme, what would be your advice to upcoming graduates or people just starting out and figuring out how they want to sort of present their work now? Um, I will go with James. Cool, thank you. Um, oh, okay, I don't want to say this too much in my direction, but I'll go for it anyway. Um, okay, so yeah, for me, so I suppose I also wrote a bit of dissertation on this as well, so that's probably why I've been thinking about it. I wrote my dissertation on this before 
I'm not on this exact topic, before I even knew the pandemic was really happening, which was quite good timing, perhaps. Um, but I suppose for me, the screen is our new sort of way we interact with work. Um, and we've not, we're not used to using the screen for that. Um, and it's sort of how we've been brought up. Um, yeah, so we've been brought up online shopping, gaming, uh, Netflix, um, yeah, like catch up TV, on demand TV. Um, so we're we're used to consuming on it, but not used to engaging um, long periods of time on this medium. Um, so just for me, and I suppose, yeah, for raising things has really helped me think around this. Um, but yeah, realizing what the what the viewers used to doing in that space. So the, the viewers used to acting a certain way in the gallery, but not used to acting in a particularly um, yeah, it's not the viewers not used to acting that way on a computer. Um, so just thinking about what the viewers gonna experience your work like on this space and what preconceptions they might have about using the computer, the internet. Um, so if that made sense like yeah. that so you're you're thinking about what's the user journey for the person experiencing your work and you're are you doing a kind of do you do a sort of visualization of that when you're planning a project yeah um and yeah like even though with uh Khadija was mentioning the sort of instagram and the kind of the phenomenon of the link in bio yeah. uh, which um yeah, it's a really strange thing. And to think that um, a link in bio you follow from your phone, which automatically takes you onto your phone, which is a portrait. And I was discussing with Ella the other day, the, the portrait versus the 16 by nine um, viewing that you get on a computer. Um, so all of that is really strange. And for, from my exhibition, I didn't quite come to terms with Instagram really, how I really felt about it, but that's for you to think about on your project how you want to engage with Instagram. Thank you James. Yeah I think social media is a big one at the moment. I think it was big anyway but um, yeah I, I am quite interested to hear about how you guys are find, like find social media. Um, maybe we'll do that see if there's any questions that come through at the end. Um, so I'm going to ask Natalie what have been your big learnings from doing um, platform and sort of graduating digitally, what would you like to share? Well, I mean, following on from the social media thing, I think definitely sort of being able to promote your work online via social media, via Instagram has um, been a massive learning curve for me because I never really used to, I never used it really in earlier in my degree. Because I just wasn't interested really but um I've definitely learned the value of it and it's just I think for any creative person in that, this day and age is it's really important to be able to utilize um social media uh, so yeah I just learned how you kind of have to be a bit very vocal about your work and I'm not really I I was never really that confident with sort of it talking about it and um, in sort of intellectual manner. So, and I wasn't very good at that. So it's been, yeah, it's been interesting to learn how to express intentions um, via social media, which feels like a, like a sort of the opposite of intellectual realm, I guess. Um, but I guess it is good to think about how these things can merge and yeah. So social media, big thing. You. Yeah. You no, know Natalie, I'm quite surprised by your answer because I thought you did your Instagram TV video like such a pro. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope that you do more. Like, it was really Oh, thank cool. you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I think um, it is, it's really interesting kind of thinking about, you know, maybe going from writing a thesis and being very academic to actually how are you going to write something or, you know, a caption or choose an image that's going to draw someone into that link in your bio um and how you know what what is that audience that you have um do you want do you want your granny to really want to go visit it or is it your tutor or an artist you like um 
yeah, lots, lots to think about. Um, I am going to ask Mahela, um, could you please share your big learning from this year with us? Yeah, um, so I'm gonna, um, yeah, well, what I want to, to do is to actually build on to what Natalie and James have said. And I think that while it is important to have a, a certain kind of presence on social media, but I think that it is equally important to have this, um, this ability to, to just send emails and reach on a one-to-one -one basis. Because I also feel, I, and I guess that this is in a way one thing that I would be interested in kind of like trying, I suppose, as a future plan to, to just reach people on a one-by-one -one basis and, and just email, email them, which is what I kind of was doing even before uh, with my projects. And I feel that one-to-one, -one, I suppose, emailing can um, lead us to, to kind of like so many opportunities, both creative and professional ones. And I think that what the email does is it allows you to, in a way, seek for the people who resonate with, with your own voice. So that then in time, you can build a closely knit community of people who resonate with you. And I think that to me personally, it's much more important to have a small community of people who resonate with uh, my personal, I guess, aesthetics and ideas. Um, it is as important as to um, have a voice, have a strong voice um, on social media. So I think it's actually a kind of like a combination between the two, um, essentially. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. The IRL and the URL. Um, and uh, yeah, having critical friends, developing critical friends is great. And I, I would say, I had, I think there was like two really influential chats I had when I was leaving art school. One was with a tutor who was like, what, what are you going to do to earn money now? And I was like, oh, <laughs> that's a big one. Um, and um, I needed that. I needed that kind of dose of reality, I think. And another one was with Sarah, who is the curator for Platform. And she was just kind of talking really in a very generous way about you know, what, what are the options when you're an early career artist? Can you go do residency programs? Should you apply for development programs? Just kind of giving me a sense of what the landscape was um, before sort of starting my practice. Um, so yeah, thank you for that response. That's really a good reminder, I think, um, to keep developing those one-on-one -on -one relationships. Um, Khadija, could you please share your learning from this year? And um, yeah, any thoughts on kind of being a recent graduate and what it's like. Um, yeah, sure. I think very similarly to like Natalie, I think like learning to be actively vocal about your work, I think is something about I've kind of dipped in and out of but I think initially I would have really struggled with because I think this is the first time that I made work about myself. So it was kind of daunting to have the idea of that just being, I guess, so exposed, but it was definitely a really positive experience because it ended up reaching people who I wouldn't have thought would be interested in it. And, um, so yeah, I think just having that confidence in yourself. Um, but also, I guess, when it comes to putting work out digitally, I think when it comes to putting a physical things, I think and we've kind of spoken about this, I think there's an idea that you have a bit more control over the space. Um, and I think that was a bit of an anxiety I had about this work was you know I think a big like I said before a big part of it was wanting everyone to listen to the sound piece while they looked at the portraits but without the room I didn't really have as much control over that but I think I just learned to embrace you just have to learn to embrace that you know it, not everyone will do exactly what you want but that means everyone will kind of leave it have a different experience with the work which I guess in itself can be quite positive yeah, um, yeah. So don't be afraid to try new things. Yeah. Even if it feels a bit um, out of your comfort zone. Those are really awesome answers. Um, I'm aware of the time and we have one question from our audience. Um, so have any of you used the Artist Support Pledge? And um, for those of you who don't know what the Artist Support Pledge is, um, during the lockdown, um, there was a kind of internet phenomenon in which artists were invited to um, make additions of their work and then sell. I think when you sold a certain number, you would then buy another artist edition. Um, have you guys, and I think this maybe is like a more general question actually about like, 
are you thinking about how you might sell your work or um yeah kind of the financial side of your practice <laughs> um would anyone like to answer uh i didn't use i didn't take part in the artist support pledge i think because I think the amount freaked me out a bit because I thought, oh, surely I can't um, sell anything for that much. So I, I think I was put off a bit by that. But um, I am looking into sort of the financial aspects and selling some things in the future um, because there's this whole thing about, I think, sort of high art being gallery based and then there's the people that sell the stuff and there's like this big gap in between but I think it's it's not necessary to uh, have such a humongous um, disparity between the both. I think artists can um, enjoy exhibiting work um, as well as earning money so yeah there's there's no shame in it I don't think but yeah I'm definitely interested in again using the internet to Get the work out there definitely definitely i think there's absolutely no shame in um yeah earning money from what you're doing um and i actually what i really like about things like the artist support pledge and just generally um i've seen so many amazing pieces of art show up on people's instagrams and actually i felt like i've been able to sort of start collecting things more like that are more affordable um and a lot of artists early career artists that i love um who I love their work, I I can't afford to get their things from galleries. And a lot of them aren't showing in galleries. They're not at that stage where they're kind of represented yet. And so having that direct connection, I think is is really powerful, actually. Um, have any of you guys done the artist support pledge or anything similar during this time? I shall take, Ooh. I was just gonna say, but I think that's definitely the side that I kind of, and struggling to grapple with I guess and kind of have always struggled with and it's just I don't know I guess especially this time round the work was really like about myself and about my friends and family so it's kind of hard to find that balance of turning that personal output into a financial one I guess I really hear you on that. My degree show, my platform show was a lot of self-portraits and I found it really hard to find people that would want to buy them. Um, Cause I was like looking quite angry a lot of them as well. <laughs> um, so I can really see why someone probably didn't want them on their walls. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I think there is something in that. Um, yeah, I, I, haven't, I've, I haven't made it work kind of financially without you know having a sort of nine to five um and it it takes it takes a really long time to sort of work there actually not for everyone it, it really varies it really depends on your practice and how it's materializing but um yeah i definitely hear you on uh selling pictures of yourself is quite challenging sometimes <laughs> um james or mahela would you like to add anything I, I suppose well given the fact that i had an addition as part of my show i may as well have a quick chat about it um I suppose, I suppose the addition to me is kind of I don't know, a bit troubling and I haven't fully got my head around it in terms of going forwards. But for this show, I, I didn't want to set it out right because who buys an addition? Um, I suppose you can price it, you can price it out of your friend's range, uh, which price it into the collector's pocket um, or you price it for your friend's pocket um and then it snaps up before the collectors get it um so that's why this edition was sort of sold or given away via a raffle system just to um yeah just i don't know just the i suppose the art world is so up in the air right now art world in inverted commas um i thought this is a chance to try something new um and sort of build the aura about my edition by the fact it wasn't a traditional edition. Um, so yeah, maybe that's not the most uh, financially viable future, um, but certainly one that's interesting for my practice. Um, Great thing to try. I've, I've submitted, fingers crossed. <laughs>
um yeah yeah it's so exciting and i think yeah it's just good to remind us remind everyone that people are still buying art people are still commissioning art people are still funding art there are opportunities for early career artists out there um and you just need to find them and put your put your additions out try new ways of kind of putting them out there um i'm aware that we are over time um so i might say goodbye if that's okay with everyone um thank you so much for your brilliant input this evening uh, it was really great it's been really nice meeting all of you um and i've loved seeing your works materialize over the past month and i really wish you guys all the best um i also just want to say thank you so much to the modern oxford team to sivan and um particularly uh, like Sarah and Celia and um, all the brilliant people at Modern Oxford behind the scenes who've made tonight happen and possible. Um, so thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you.